Ando. Mm hmm. Bit of a uh, smorgasbord, March 30th. Really? Yeah, a lot of options. A lot of options. Here's what I wanted to get to. Yep. 2007. Danny Minogue bought in mm -hmm. something incredible to the show. Because the Lee family farm mm -hmm. backed onto the Minogue family farm mm -hmm. in the suburb, the Melbourne suburb of Canterbury yes. <laughs> growing up, um, <laughs> the two properties were close to each other. You shared yeah, a back sh fence. You'd Often the children would wander back and forth between <gasps> paddocks. Well, I went down, the, it was down the road, and then um, right. the Minogues moved in behind us. So, yeah, it could have been depending yep. on the year. But I went down to get um, Kylie's autograph. <laughs> and her dad said, tell me to buzz off. Yeah. Um, and then the, the second most exciting Minogue moment for me growing up was Danny Minogue dated Jacques Villeneuve, yeah. the Formula One driver yep. for a while, who was like this hot Formula One driver. Jacques came out to meet the family. I wandered down to try and get a little bit of a glimpse of Jacques. While we're meeting? <laughs> while, we're, while we're letting strangers into the house, yeah. perhaps I might join as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, because there is the connection, mm. Danny bought in, had a copy somehow of your primary school musical. What? Remember? Yeah. Do you remember this? I don't remember. I don't remember. Do you I remember bringing it on the show? No. She's the one that bought it on the show. Which musical? The I horror? reckon oh, from my memory, it's Not a Penny. Not a Penny. <laughs> Which is <laughs> such a good name for a yeah. primary school musical that was no doubt written by one of the teachers. <laughs> it, this is the, I think. It is written by a teacher. It covers the 1930s depression era, which is very difficult. And it's fun and, and exciting time for kids. Perfectly captured when nine-year-old nine sing by sing nine -year -old, about it. Nine-year-old children in one of the most uh, elite upper middle class white <laughs> suburbs of Melbourne. Yeah, let's hear. Mm. I think this is the bit okay. we should put it in. Now, look, uh, Danny. Yeah. You volunteered to come on the show, Andy. You don't know what we're speaking about. I don't. Do I want to know what we're speaking about? Danny, can you tell our listeners what has come into your possession? Well, what. What do you think I could have in my handbag that would have anything to do with you? I don't know. I know my our parents used to live in the same street. So Ooh, is it he's okay. Oh, on it, on it, on it, on it. We were having a little street party a couple of weeks ago, and one of the girls from down the street, her daughter came up and she said, "Oh, I go to the same school that Andy went to," and I said, "Oh, really?" And she said, "I've got this very interesting VHS of his first." play that <laughs> so in my drunken stupor I went go get it oh and, no and, and uh, ladies and gentlemen <laughs> I give you the children and staff of Baldwin Primary School's 1993 production of Not, Not a, a Penny. penny. <laughs> Look, uh, Andrew Lee is listed as playing a young gentleman called James O'Reilly. But look, I've had a watch of this several times and it gets funnier and funnier. But I thought as a special treat for our listeners, Danny, I've put together a little synopsis of Andy's work <laughs> in Not a Penny. Set in the late 1920s, Not a Penny tells the... A harrowing tale of how hard it was to find employment, as was highlighted by the group opening number, Please Oh Please Can You Give Us A Job, Give Us The Chance To Earn A Few Bob. <laughs> scene involves a few of the cast members playing cricket for, and I'm not joking, a full minute and a half. This is where keen audience members might have spied one Andy Lee, aged 11, fielding in slips and getting a little angry when girls drop catches. And Andy's frustration grew to the point where he dives for a catch at one stage and hits his head on a pole. <laughs> Young Diva ends the cricket match when he gets out. It's no good. Can't concentrate. And this is where we get to hear Andy's character, James O'Reilly, give a stirring monologue. I've got to do something to help Mum. She struggles night and day to look after us. Dad's up north, trying to make good. Can't just sit at school all day. I've got to do more to help. So young James O'Reilly heads off to find work. But alas, there's trouble on the way. Some beggars. Hey, mister. What's your problem? Which the orchestra feels is an appropriate time to burst into another song. <laughs> 
However, I will spare you the full song. Andy then goes to the boot factory to get a job, where the over-enthusiastic cobbling in the background makes the audio impossible to hear. Put your socks on you. This is the first job, James. Now that Andy's character, James, has secured a job, he's going home after his first day of work. But again, there's trouble on the streets. James, isn't it? The job snatcher. I don't know what you mean. But you do know what they mean, James, and they beat you up, much to the amusement of the audience. <laughs> the next day, back at the boot factory, James is told to go and bet on some horses for his boss. But once again, due to the over-enthusiastic cobbling in the background, you can't hear the dialogue. Move around, back, but there's trouble for James at the off-licence betting premises. Some children dressed as police barge in and arrest him. Get the kid! Come along with us! And his character James puts up an amazingly dramatic struggle, which impresses the audience, led by a woman who, I suspect, is Andy's mum. <laughs> is yet to come. Andy's character James meets a very quiet girl on the street and explains his predicament. I lost my job yesterday. I'm sorry. But how can they share their sorrow together? I know. What about a duet? Hit it, well-tuned band. <laughs> it could go on longer. And it does. <laughs> Bravo, Andy Lee, you 11-year-old shining star. Not a penny, but six pounds of talent. <laughs> No idea. Not a penny was so hilarious. Oh, like every good stage show, when you film it, you don't get the essence <laughs> of, how, of how good it is. Was it, it even worse? It wasn't made for video. <laughs> <laughs> Was it even worse? Wow! The most amazing thing is, and I and we we're filming these podcasts, and yep. let's put it up. You remember the, the lyrics? Andy sitting here lyrics. singing along, singing along. I also remember that um, the band that was all school students. You can tell, but, but the five sixes. No one's grade accusing five, them of being the Melbourne five, Philharmonic. <laughs> grade five sixes were in the plays. <laughs> Normally, it was grade three and fours in the band. There was <laughs> there was one violinist called Chinchi who just kept falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a long set. <laughs> there'd, be, there'd be Mr. Arnold, who wrote the play but also yeah. conducted the orchestra. It can be a long just set. Just trying to get Chinchy up <laughs> and about. <laughs> oh, so, and that goes for everyone in the orchestra. Let's all wake up.